Hello everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Feed My Sheep Earthquake Reports and more. It's the 23rd and uh, I have a dog on my chair. Let's, let's move you down. There you go. And uh, we're having a look back uh, to the 17th, 18th. Um, we had some very interesting, unusual activity back there that uh, I've never seen before. So this is, uh, this is something we need to address. And it ties into the uh, Solomon's Islands earthquake. Uh, so we're going to do a short program on this portion today. And uh, it ties into some VLF waves in the States as well. So uh, before we begin, all of our programs are dedicated to our Heavenly Father's service. So we'll start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. We're here again before you and under your protection, under your wings. Um, we thank you that we're still able to communicate with everyone, with your audience. We thank you, Jesus, for your guidance through everything. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring us the understanding that we need. Um, we look for the truth in all things, and we certainly need to find it. There is so much deception in these days. Um, it's hard to find. It's getting harder to uh, find the truth without some help. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is Honiera Solomon Islands. If it'll pop up here, there we go. And this was uh, the earthquake, I believe they called this one a 6-2. Uh, a and there's, oh, there's a, a second earthquake here. This is a, a separate earthquake um, over in the uh, Yucatan. And we can see that well from the Tapish Yucatan site. We see it right there. So not a not a huge earthquake. Uh, they called this one um, a five eight, I believe. I think this was a um, pretty close. It was about a six. Now, in doing seismology, the angle of view makes a big difference. So looking around from different angles um, is makes it makes a very large difference. In this case, we've got two earthquakes as well that overlap each other. So this is Adak, Alaska. And we can see now the P wave is stretching out here. This is a deep initial earthquake. This is a second earthquake here, um, still very deep. This is a third one here. This is the fourth one. And uh, you'll see that this splits up even more than what we're seeing here. But this S wave is, is pretty accurate. We're getting about a three and a half minute, uh, three and three quarter minutes S wave duration right here. We'll see if that's consistent. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to get to other stuff that's going on. But this is uh, this is part of the package of what was going on. So we can see that deep activity in here. Um, it's obscured by the end of the line somewhat. Where are we looking at here? We're looking from Waterville, Maine. And we see, so we've got two earthquakes here. There's a... Um, third and fourth. There's, uh, there's one in here, there's another one here, there's another one here. This is a third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. There's twelve that are 5.0 and greater. So this was, uh, there's at least a dozen earthquakes in a series event associated with this. Some people call these aftershocks. I mean, you could call it aftershocks after this one here, but then you've got a series of foreshocks and a series of aftershocks um, all tied in together. This is essentially a series of earthquakes along a plate margin. And that ended up being about a 7-2, just based on uh, propagation. I was saying you can't look at the, um, we've got two, we know we've got two earthquakes in here. So what it does, this earthquake that's hiding in here extends the body wave. So the total duration cannot be applied to this earthquake because it's extended by the second earthquake that happened within the time frame of the first main one. And it's from a different location, but it was large enough to extend that uh, um, body wave pretty much everywhere in the world. 
something to be aware of. Now, we're going to look at Russia and what was going on in Russia. And let's look at the timeline of this earthquake. We're at uh, 1500. We're on the 18th. Okay. So 1500 and the 18th. Actually, 1400 on the line here. Main body is on, 15, on the 1500 line, but here, this is the 17th coming out of Bilib or 16th, sorry, coming out of Bilibino, Russia. The 16th ends right here, and then this is the 17th down here. So this change in signal, um, first of all, this is a manufactured very large signal in the crust of the Earth, a very large manufactured signal. Okay. And you can see down here there's an underlying um, low amplitude VLF wave, but it's being overcome by the size of the activity through here. So a little bit of this vibrational line remains down here. You can see it there. Um, but mainly this very large signal overwhelms the seismogram. So this is a huge big signal. Now Bilibino rushes in Siberia and it has an associated, Bilibino has a large nuclear power plant. So they've got lots of energy there to do this type of uh, um, engin um, engineering effect. This is an engineer um, engineering effect to create vibrations in the ground. So essentially, there are, um, I believe this is an earthquake manufacturing signal. I can't prove it though, and it carries on longer. So this is uh, later on. We're getting into the uh, past the 17th and into the 18th here. And this carried on um, for some hours after this. This is over 24 hours of this activity. So 17th and into the 18th, we've got a manufacturing signal, ground wave manufacturing signal. We can understand that that means earthquake. And uh, Tixi Russia was blacked out with VLF waves at the same time. So now all of this activity comes in at the same time. This is Hanover, New Hampshire, while all this Russia activity is going on in Bilibino, we're getting a great increase in, um, in waves, VLF waves, in Hanover, New Hampshire. And we're getting uh, activity also on the 17th at uh, Cache, let's see, uh, Hardware Ranch, Cache County, Utah. And the Blue Mountains Array in Oregon, we can see that this is distant activity all through here. And this gets closer to the seismogram in this portion. Again, this is during the time of that significant activity coming out of Russia. Lisbon, New Hampshire also had a series of waves. And we don't commonly see, well, I have seen activity from Lisbon, New Hampshire. It isn't common, though. So this is large activity for Lisbon. Um, Puhakaloa, Hawaii had activity through the same period as well. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. This is the 17th up here. And this is the 18th down here. Um, again, this is... Uh, this activity up top, this is, I'm getting later in the day, um, but this activity at the top, this is a VLF wave generation from here to here and from here to here. So there's some overlap from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom. Um, it just means you've got duplicate waves, but the period of busyness is about the same for the bottom and the top. But again, this is during the time when Russia is putting out all that activity. So we had a very, very busy time period. It continued from Hanover, New Hampshire, and we had more activity down here in the uh, 1800 line, getting just, just after midnight. So that's a lot of activity out of New Hampshire. And uh, Hanover on the 18th had even more. So it continued to be active. Now that's um, that's about four or five 
five or six times normal activity for what we see out of Hanover, New Hampshire. And we've got to wonder if the manufacturing of that waveform didn't have an effect. And Waterbury, Vermont happened during the same time period. Now, you see this earthquake here. This is actually uh, the same earthquake we were looking at. Um, happened in the, so this is the Solomon Islands earthquake, the propagated signal to Waterbury, um, Waterbury, Vermont, sorry. And uh, here in Hanover, New Hampshire, that earthquake signal came across right through here. It's missing for some reason. I don't know why it's missing, but it's missing. And Palmer Station, Antarctica also was acting up on the 18th. Now this is after, I believe, the, uh, the activity had stopped at this point. And it's showing another set of earthquakes here, but um, regardless, uh, I believe this is uh, again, yeah, this is again the uh, um, Solomon Islands earthquake. And uh, so this is, new, this is Palmer Station reacting with VLF waves out of Antarctica. So we had a lot of earthquake activity. So there's a big question for you. And I don't know the answer. What effect did this have on activity around the world? What activity did it, what, uh, activity did it promote or did it promote activity in the United States? It's a big question. I've never seen this activity from Bilibino before. Okay, so this is the first time. That's why I'm uh, focusing on it and uh, spending this program on it. And that completes it. So it leaves us with a question. We don't always have the answer. We have the evidence of why to ask a question, but we don't necessarily have the answer. And I hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to come back with another program pretty shortly. So we'll see you then on Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports, and more.